Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay. It's good to be with you. And we're looking at biblical leadership. And um, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. So, we have quite a few verses to look at. So let's come before the Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your love and your grace and your mercies. And Lord, I pray that as we look at your word today on biblical leadership, that you will guide us and encourage us and use what I have to share to be a blessing to people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Don't forget my website, jasonbirdspreacher.com, jasonbirdspreacher.com. And don't forget uh, some helpful websites that I really enjoy. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones Recording Trust. There's a recent documentary come out called Logic on Fire. You must, must see that documentary. Legionnaire Ministries and um, Ravi Zachariah International is a very, very helpful. So, and um, to listen to sermons, sermon audio and sermon index are very helpful. So we're going to look at biblical leadership. So I've got so many verses. So I'll just get my so many uh, verses. So we've got the verses here. So if we turn to two Timothy. Uh, chapter 1 verse 6, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1 verse 6 it says wherein I put thee in remembrance that thou stirred up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of thy hands so here Peter, uh, uh, Timothy, uh, sorry, Paul is telling Timothy to use his gift. If you're going to be a leader, you've got to ask the question, are you gifted? Are you, has God gifted you to be a leader? Uh, one preacher said that it's no good going out being a street preacher if you cannot speak your voice. Because nobody's going to hear you, you need to speak it out. You know, whatever you're called to, you need to have the gift. And have you got the gift of leadership? You need to ask that question. If we turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you're going to be a leader, you need to be diligent in leadership and diligent in the study of the Word of God. You need to really, really study the Bible, but be diligent in being a leader. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 5. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at the appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove Rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. To be a leader in the church of God is to teach the Bible, to preach the Bible. There are a lot of people who are against preaching in the church, but the Bible teaches that preaching is central uh, to a being a leader. You, you should be a person who teaches and preaches the word of God. Then if we turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 11 to 16. It says, These things command and teach the 
Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attended to reading, to exalted, to doctrine. So here, he says, these things command and teach. If you're a leader, you and God has called you, you have authority. So exercise your authority, not as a dictator, but to help people to know the word of God. He says, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. So as a leader, your, your principal job is to teach sound doctrine. Verse 14 says, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which is given thy prophecy. So to be a leader is to not neglect the gift. But back in 12, it says... Be an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity. If you're a leader, your character has to match your profession. You have to have a character that is working consistently with God. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. This is a, a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behaviour, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. If you're going to be a leader, again, your character has to be right. You can't be uh, brawling in the house, uh, getting angry quickly, uh, drinking and getting yourself in a mess with drink. But you have to be sober, vigilant, uh, of good behavior, treating your wife rightly, treating your family rightly, etc. So your character has to be right. It's no good living a double life. That double life needs to go. There needs to be repentance. There needs to be a change of heart. The way to get rid of a double life is to have a greater vision of God, to, to see how great God is. And as you see how great God is and, and how majestic and holy he is, then you'll begin to put away sin. But it, it, a leader is to have a, a character... Um, that is not a double life, but is consistent. Then if you turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, it says... Uh, verse 11, sorry. Ephesians 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. To be a leader is, number one, to work with others. We're going to mention that again in a minute. But to be a leader is to work with others, to be a team player. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers it's the biblical pattern of being a leader is that you're not a leader on your own, that there are other leaders around you. If you're not willing to be accountable to other leaders or to any leadership, then you're not a leader. True leadership, a true leader will want other leaders around them and want to be accountable. Very often people get into leadership uh, specifically being pastors and they rule like dictators because they've got no other leaders around them to be accountable to. So often people go off and do stuff without being accountable, without being accountable to anybody. And we have to be accountable. So I just want to look at a few verses about accountability and this is very, very important in leadership. Acts chapter 14, 23. And just to say in this Ephesian passage why you have leadership. Verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. 
The gift of leadership that God has given you is not for you, it's for the church. It's not for you, it's for the church, it's for the building up of the body. And you need other people's gifts and leadership gifts and the church needs your gifts. But it's not about you, it's about that gift being a blessing to the body, to a help to the body. So let's just turn to Acts 14.23. Now I just want to look at accountability. Acts 14.23. It says, When they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commanded them to the Lord in whom they believed. Now, people were appointed elders, not on their own uh, own fruition that they wanted to be appointed elders no the church the, the the leaders appointed these leaders in other words there's a plurality of leaders working together leaders appointing leaders not a man appointing themselves or a woman appointing themselves but leaders appointing leaders Acts 15.2 When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go to Jerusalem on the apostles and the elders about this question. There's a controversy here. And so all the leaders get together to discuss it. Leaders, plural, not one, but plural leaders. Paul was a great leader, but he was not on his own. He was working with other leaders. It's so important if, you, if you're going to be in leadership or if you aspire to leadership that you be a person who's willing to work with others, a person who's willing to be accountable to others. So often people set themselves up in ministry and start ministries, but they're not accountable to anybody. They're not accountable to any leadership or anybody, and that is not biblical. It's really important that you be accountable to leaders and that you work with leaders that you're able to subject yourself to leaders as you work with leaders and if you're not willing to do that there is something wrong because the biblical pattern is we work as team players subjecting ourselves to other leaders Acts chapter 20 verse 17 From Meltius he said to Ephesus are called the elders of the church. Elders, plural. Then if we go to 1 Timothy 5.22. 1 Timothy 5.22. It says 1 Timothy 5.22 Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of one man's sins. Keep the self pure. In other words, lay, don't lay your hands on someone quickly. In other words, don't appoint someone to leadership quickly. Take your time to think about it, pray about it. Take your time to train that person, to get that person ready. Don't just throw them in the deep end straight away when they get converted, but give them time to mature and grow. So we've looked at leadership, biblical leadership, and we've looked at a few things there about character, about gift, about plurality of leaders, and accountability. And I really, really pray that that will be a blessing to you. Meditate on what I've said uh, and ask the Lord to reveal or speak to you through that study for your glory, for, for his glory. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your love and grace. And Father, forgive us if we failed you in any way. 
uh, in any shape in concerning leadership. And we acknowledge, Lord, we are sinful, vile people before you, Lord, but we come before you. And Lord, we thank you that we are washed in your blood and that we're clean in your blood, that we're your people today. And we thank you for your great mercy and love. And Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters today that you would guide them and lead them in whatever leadership that you've called them. Guide them, Lord. And Lord, we just give you the prayers and glory. And I pray that the pastors, Lord, the men that you raise up, that they would be godly men and that you bless them. I pray if anybody is to be a pastor in this, by listening to this video, may they be good men of you, Lord. I pray for the women as you... Uh, call them to do the work what you've called them to do Lord we pray that you guide them and lead them and that in their sphere where that you have put them there would be good leaders amongst the women Lord so Lord we just praise you and give you the glory Lord and we just magnify your name and Father we just pray that we be we be godly people who who live Father God oh Lord that we live faithful to you and and that father we are true to you and that father god we we become leaders that are an example to the flock lord and and so give us that maturity and give us that strength and character all of us lord all those who listen to this video that we be godly people lord who, who work as team players work with accountability to other elders other leaders lord and and that we shepherd people in the right way. and So, Lord, we give you the prayers and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. God bless you. And have a lovely day. God bless you.